If you were asked what is the most canonical, most reliable source of accurate information about a Pokemon, you'd probably think of the Pokedex, right? And it kind of is, but it really isn't. There are so many problems with the Pokedex, so let me give you a little sample of it. I will randomly select three Pokemon and do some critical commentary on their Pokedex entries. Okay, Arceus. Uh, no, no, this is a whole other video. Uh, let's put some restrictions on this. Let's go with one from Kanto, one from Johto, and one from Hoenn, since those are the ones with the most material to look at. And maybe I'll re-randomize uh, if I have to, to make sure the entries are actually interesting and that I'm not repeating myself. Electabuzz, the electric Pokemon, is three foot seven or 1.1 meters tall and weighs about 66 pounds or 30 kilograms. And the Pokedex has said quite a bit about it over the years. In 28 core RPG appearances, there have been about 11 unique entries, if you ignore the repeats and the small paraphrases, which is actually quite a bit, even for a Kanto Pokemon. But I want to bring your attention to one issue. The Pokedex in red, blue, and leaf green says that this Pokemon is normally found near power plants, but if they leave, they cause major blackouts. So I guess the power company uses their resident Electabuzz as part of their power generation somehow. But then the Pokedex in yellow, diamond, pearl, and sun all blame blackouts on Electabuzz showing up at power plants and eating electricity. Sun specifically attributes half of all blackouts to this. But then Ultra Moon tries to salvage Electabuzz's reputation by saying, quote, while it's often blamed for power outages, the truth is the cause of outages is more often an error on the part of the electric company. So obviously not all of that can be true at the same time, but let's have a look at another Pokemon. Jumpluff, the cottonweed Pokemon, is two foot seven or 80 centimeters tall and weighs 6.6 .6 pounds or three kilograms. This one only has four unique entries in 21 games, and they're all still fairly similar. Jumpluff rides the winds to go anywhere in the world and scatters its cotton spores along the way. Did you catch the problem there? This description is very much in line with the design, but I find it unbelievable because Jumpluff is too heavy. Jumpluff weighs three kilograms, which is about the weight of three of these which, yeah, it's pretty light, but not light enough to float in the wind, even if you do have three giant cotton balls attached to you. Imagine how many helium balloons you'd have to tie to just one of these to make it float. And helium actually floats, cotton doesn't. You could argue that, hey, this is the Pokemon world, magic exists, so maybe Jumpluff is using some kind of magic to float. And to your credit, the Pokedex in Crystal and Y does say that Jumpluff can control its trajectory even in fierce winds. But Jumpluff's move pool doesn't seem to agree. It's only ever been able to learn three flying type moves, acrobatics, aerial ace, and bounce. No gust, no whirlwind, no tailwind. And even if you look at wind moves of other types, the only one it's ever been able to learn is fairy wind, which was added in Gen 6. It went four generations with no wind moves at all. So I really don't think it has much control over the winds. I guess it could have another method of floating, but there's nothing in its Pokedex entries or in its move pool to suggest that. Floating is a major part of all of Jumpluff's Dex entries, so I'm not gonna say that it can't float at all, but I think the distance it can cover is vastly exaggerated. I definitely don't see it going around the world. Okay, last one. Salamence, the dragon Pokemon, is four foot 11, that's a meter and a half, and weighs about 226 pounds, or roughly 103 kilograms. It only has four really unique Pokedex entries in 22 games, not counting the Mega, and they all talk about its uncontrollable anger and or how it got its wings. And there is the issue. The Pokedex entries in Ruby, Sapphire, Diamond, Pearl, Platinum, Black, White, Black 2, White 2, Omega Ruby, Alpha Sapphire, and Ultra Moon all say that it got its wings because of its long-held dreams of flying. 
But that's not how metamorphosis works. Metamorphoses, and Darwinian evolution for that matter if you want to go that route, are triggered by biological and environmental factors. And as I mostly determined in the last Pokestudies video, that's how Pokemon evolution works too. You don't evolve or metamorphose based on what you want. It's not like if a Baggin dreams of diving, it'll grow gills instead. No, if you catch a Baggin and raise it enough, it's going to evolve into a Shelgun and Salamence no matter what it wants. So why would the Pokedex say that Salamence got its wings because it wanted to fly? Well, it's the lore. It's like a Pokedex entry for a legendary Pokemon. Did anyone see and document Groudon creating the continents? No, but that's what the legend says. Probably someone saw some Baggin jumping off a cliff and thought, hey, it's like they're trying to fly. And look at that, the final stage has wings. It has finally made it. Baggin, Shelgun, and Salamence are an inspiration to us all. And now that's just what we say about them. Like we say that black hats are unlucky or that ostriches hide their heads in the sand. Doesn't mean that it's true. So what do we get from all this? Quick recap. One, Pokedex entries are extremely repetitive. Even with 22 core RPG appearances, Salamence only has really four unique entries and they still manage to be repetitive. Tons of entries are paraphrased or even copy pasted exactly. Two, Pokedex entries are often mutually contradictory, like with Electabuzz. Is it causing blackouts because it is at power plants or because it isn't? Or is it not causing blackouts at all? Three, the Pokedex exaggerates. Jumpluff can ride the winds around the world. Machamp can punch you clear over the horizon. Magcargo's body temperature is double the sun's surface temperature. I really don't believe any of that. Four, the Pokedex includes lore, and often it's stated as fact. The Pokedex doesn't say the story goes that Salamence got its wings because of its dreams. No, it straight up says Salamence got its wings because of its dreams. And here's five, one more thing to consider. At four feet, 11 inches, Salamence is smaller than I am. Smaller even than a furret. And that's supposed to be a whole foot bigger. But is it? Like, what exactly do those height and weight measurements mean? I mean, the Pokedex only has one weight and one height for each Pokemon, but we know from things like the Magikarp Fishing Quest at Lake of Rage, Pokemon Go, and now Let's Go Pikachu and Let's Go Eevee, that the actual size of Pokemon varies. So what's with that single number in the Pokedex? Is it an average? That's what seems the most likely, but it doesn't say that anywhere. And what's the standard for measuring height anyway? Salamence is 4'11", is that to the top of the head? Or to the shoulder like you'd measure a horse? Or even head to tail like you'd measure a snake? It makes a big difference. 4'11 head to tail would make Salamence tiny. 4'11 to the shoulder, well, now that's more what you'd expect from a pseudo-legendary. But because we don't know, it's very hard to really understand the size of a Pokemon and to compare it to Pokemon of different body types. Oh, and there is one more thing. The Pokedex often mentions locations in our real world, which seems strange, but that's a topic for a whole other video. So how could this happen? How is it that the primary reference text of the Pokemon world is so unscientific? The technology in this world is incredibly advanced, so there is definitely some good scientific research going on, but clearly not here. Personally, I think that Pokemon biology is just a severely underfunded field. And when I say biology, I mean all of it, the physiology, ecology, even evolution. And I can think of a parallel with climate science and climate change in our world in that most people agree that it's important to study it, but the people in power aren't really willing to fund it. Which does raise the question of who is in power. Maybe another book studies episode for the future. The original Kanto Pokedex was Professor Oak's passion project. He spent decades working on it, collecting Pokemon data, presumably writing the flavor text, and he only has three aids, so most of the help he gets is from the 10-year-olds that he recruits. His sample sizes must have been tiny, the text must have been written hastily and poorly fact-checked, with the result that all of this research gets condensed into a single weight and height measure and no more than one or two sentences of descriptive text 
that is often wrong. The only truly useful and comprehensive feature of the Pokedex is the database of habitats. And it's not just Kanto that doesn't fund this research. Elm has a single aide. Kukui is by himself until he gets Lily as an intern. So the Pokedexes of other regions have to rely on the foundation provided by previous models as much as possible as a way to reduce costs. They copy or paraphrase many of the existing entries, write new ones just for the species that are native or endemic to that region, and voila, a new Pokedex. So the mistakes aren't found or fixed, and often end up becoming part of the common knowledge that gets repeated without question. So the Pokedex may be the ultimate source of Pokemon information, but it's far from reliable. So the next time you pick up a Pokemon game, take everything you read with a good pinch of salt. Actually, make it a handful. And not like refined table salt, use the really coarse stuff. Thanks for watching this episode of Poke Studies. I'm really excited to hear what you think. Maybe you even have another idea of why the Pokedex is so wrong. Either way, let me know in the comments below. And please like and share this video. It really helps me and makes me very happy. I'll be back with another Poke Studies in a few weeks, but until then, I'll have loads of Pokemon content coming your way. So make sure to subscribe and turn on notifications. I'm Umbreon Libris, and I'll see you in the next chapter. Design episode, not design, Poke Studies, episode three. <laughs> Don't look at me like that.